Okay, friends, in this video, we are going to be talking about how to bill for your senior concierge services. And I'm also going to go into not just the different ways you can bill, but the pluses and minuses of each of the billing strategies that I'm going to be sharing with you. So how to bill, also known as getting paid for your services. So there are three core ways that um, I have worked with seniors. And these are the three ways that I've done payment and billing. The first is one, doing at the time of service. At time of service means you show up, you do the service, and you get paid right there on the spot. So whether it could be grocery shopping, it could be a companion visit, it could be you go in and help them declutter something, you go in and you help them pay some bills. It's just more of like a, a one time, or even if you go back multiple times, you can still get paid by at time of service. And I certainly have done this um in the beginning, like just saying, yes, I'll be there showing up and getting paid at the time of service. Once you start doing this and you want to be moving up this ladder, okay? So the next way that you can bill for your services is getting paid up front. So paid up front means they are prepaying. They are prepaying for the services. So there are things you're going to have to consider about that. Like, do you know how long the service is going to take? Are they buying a bulk of hours? Are they buying a small block of time? That way that when you are billing up front and prepaying for services, you know how much to bill them. The other way that you can bill for your services, and ideally, as you get busier and have more clients, this is going to be probably be the most effective billing strategy. And again, I'm going to go into why, like the pluses and minuses to each of these on the next page. So billing on a schedule. So what will your billing schedule be? You can bill a client weekly. You could bill a client bi-weekly, which would be every two weeks. So maybe you bill on the first and the 15th of the month or the first and the third Friday of the month. And then the other way you can bill is monthly. And monthly can actually be broken down into bill monthly prepay or bill monthly at the end of the month. Okay, so this one again could be prepay or at the end of the month. A prepay would be like a front end membership and at the end of the month could be more like a as per use membership. Now, the way that you physically take payment, the way you physically take payment, here are the four ways that you can take payment. And this would be, Cash, check, credit card, and Venmo. But if you use Venmo, you must consider to be legit. You need to have a business Venmo account. It should not be a personal Venmo account. Okay. So if you're doing it at time of service, you can get cash when you're there. If you do a time of service, they can give you a check when you show up. If you do a time of service, you can also run a credit card. They're, like Taking credit cards over your cell phone is so easy now. When I first started, the only available credit card processing that was out there was called Square and Square Up. And I often actually recommend that to my students inside my programs um, because it's really super easy to use. They give you a little device. You can either, you can swipe the card. Um, you can plug the numbers in. There's, it's a different ways that you can use the credit card processing. If you get paid up front, same thing. The, the downside with getting paid up front with cash is they would have to somehow get the cash to you up front. They could mail a check to you to get paid up front, or you can take credit card or accept this Venmo business account to get paid up front. And then on a schedule, same things. On a schedule, ideally, cash is going to be less, less used in this scenario um, when you're doing it either weekly or bi-weekly or monthly. But let's say you have a client that you... Um, so I used to have this a senior client, and I would visit her Often it was once a week and then sometimes it would be every other week. I would actually call her and say, you know, when would you like me to, to stop by? And she would give me a list of things from the grocery store, the liquor store, um, the pharmacy and the post office if she needed anything from the post office. And then I would. She, so she was a pay at time of service and it was a pay at time of service, but it was happening like 
once a week, once every two weeks. And she would pay me um, in check. But if it's somebody that's an ongoing client that you're working with like three months, six months, a year long, and you go on a schedule, doing a bi-weekly and eventually going to monthly, ideally, these would be the most efficient ways to accept payment for those. And again, so if you get paid, if you get paid monthly in advance, you could get paid monthly in advance by a check. You could get paid monthly in advance by a credit card. All right. So next, I want to talk about the pluses and minuses to each of these billing strategies. Okay. So if you are billing at time of service, it's the easiest to do. You can accept all the different forms of payment. But the downside to that is if you show up, they might cancel. They might not need your help anymore. They might not be in the house. I mean, I've certainly done that where somebody scheduled a service. I showed up at their door and they're like, I don't feel good today. Go away. <laughs> and so I didn't get, and I, and the thing is that I, I carved out that time to work with that client to offer, um, to, to help a client with services during that time. So I pretty pretty quickly got rid of this one, but it is how I got started. So if this is where you get started, just know you're in good company and you will build up from there. Doing a prepay of services. The pluses to prepay is services is you're getting paid up front and it's guaranteed, right? So let's say you set, sell a block of 10 hours and you get paid 10 hours up front. You've got the money before you actually deliver the services. And that, that those 10 hours is guaranteed because you've already been paid up front. If you prepay but you have to wait for a check to come in the mail. That's something to consider, right? We talked about, you know, you prepay cash would be really difficult. Prepay by check. You would just have to wait for the check to come in the mail, which is not, it's it's kind of neutral. Um, and if you want to prepay in advance, ideally you want to set up either the credit card or Venmo and do that first. And then this way you have it already set up. Then people can prepay you and then you can go and deliver your services. The downside to prepay is it's not really a downside, but just be aware you will have to track the time that you use. I will tell you, you do not need expensive software. You do not need any fancy technology. You don't need anything. You can literally track your clients. This is how I did it for the first two years of my business. What an index card. Yes, my friends. If client Betty was my client, I would list like grocery store, one hour, pharmacy, 0.5 hours, helped in the house, companionship, two and a half hours. I would add it up. And that was how much hour, how many hours I used. That was the time I used. This is literally how I tracked it in the beginning. This is easy to do if you only have a handful of clients. Of course, this is not going to be the way that you do your business, you know, two years from now, but don't let technology get in the way, but you do have to track it. And then if you do it on a schedule, of course, it's on a schedule. It's easy to do with your schedule. So if you pick a schedule, you decide when you're going to be doing it. My process is Financial Fridays. Financial Fridays is always when I do money-related tasks in the business. So that was my schedule. I, I still use Financial Friday to this day, even now. On a schedule, it will decrease your admin time, especially as you scale. Because so what this means is, let's say it takes you 15 minutes to bill each client. And let's say you have three clients during the week and you do 15 minutes on Monday, 15 minutes on Wednesday, 15 minutes on Friday, because you are doing it three times a week. They're still like getting ready to, to do it, like sitting down at the computer, opening up your your invoicing software or pulling up a, a Word document that you're going to fill out an invoice for. And if you do that three times a week, that actually takes you more time than if you did all three of those bills at one time, right? So as you're doing it on a schedule, you'll decrease your admin time. And this becomes really, really important as you grow and scale to higher numbers of clients, especially when you have team, like you don't want to do this hodgepodging because otherwise you could be doing billing five days a week and it's really going to be a time suck. It's really going to impact your productivity and it actually becomes a major money leak in your business and it negatively impacts your profitability because you're spending a lot of 
ad hoc time doing admin tasks that should all be done at the same time. The other bonus, though, to doing it on a schedule is your clients know what and when to expect their bill, right? They know, oh, Kelly sends the bill on the first of the month. Oh, Kelly sells, sends the bill on the 30th of the month. Oh, it's billed on the first and the 15th of the month. Oh, it's the first Wednesday of the month. Whatever your schedule is, just let them know in advance, and then that becomes easy for them to know when to expect the bill. The downside is you will have to be consistent. So if you tell your client that this is what it's going to be and that's what you're going to be doing it on a schedule, you're going to have to learn to keep up with that consistency. On a schedule, your pay if you're paid before services is going to require a little more b- bookkeeping, right? So again, in the beginning, you'll do a lot of it on index cards, but you'll be like paying in advance. This is how much they paid me. Let's say it was, you know, $300 for for 10 hours and you had that over there and then you have to track it down and then you're going to be tracking it on your schedule. So again, it's just a little more tracking Um, and then paid after, if you get paid after on a schedule, it could, they could default. Now, most of your clients hopefully will not default on their payments, but it does happen. Things do happen. And I will, uh, I've had, um, it happened to me maybe twice in all of my years of working with clients where I was billing at the end of the month for their services, where I did not get paid. And it was because the client passed away, um, maybe unexpectedly. And then the family just decided, you know, they weren't going to pay the bill. <laughs> so that can possibly happen. So that's why you really want to consider being paid after. But again, you get to make decisions based on your business the way you want to run your business. Okay, this was like a mini micro class in billing. If this was valuable, hit up the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Drop a comment for me below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now, friends.